Hello, and welcome to the preoperative education class for the Center for Joint Replacement at Lakewood Regional Medical Center. My name is Lena Rangel, and I am the clinical orthopedic manager and joint care coordinator for our orthopedic program. Before we get started, we have two forms that we need you to fill out. The first form is the risk assessment and prediction tool. This tool helps us to identify your next destination after leaving the hospital, whether that be home with outpatient therapy, where you get in a vehicle and go to therapy, or home with home health, where the nurses and therapists come to you, or if you need a short-term stay at a rehab facility where you're able to do your therapy and then go home. The next form is our patient needs assessment. And what this does is it helps us determine your discharge plan, what support that you have at home, what type of equipment you have, and also the setup of your home to see what type of safety needs you have. We will be asking for your email address. This will allow you to access our patient portal. This portal is online and it allows you to access your records, download them, view them, and print them for your other physicians. In today's class, we will help you with the understanding of the process of joint replacement. We will teach you what to expect during your hospital stay, we will talk about physical therapy and occupational therapy. We will cover pain management. We will talk about how to care for yourself at home, the role of a coach and caregiver, and also discharge planning. Let's talk about medical clearance. You will need to make an appointment with your primary physician and obtain special tests to determine that you are safe for surgery. They will ask you to get blood work, an EKG, chest x-ray, you may even need to get clearance from a specialist if you've had past medical conditions. We need to make sure that you get these tests done as soon as possible so that if anything is abnormal, it gives the doctors time to correct it before surgery. Please remember, it is very important to tell your doctor every medication that you're taking, not only prescription medication. We're talking about supplements, vitamins, over-the-counter medications that could possibly increase bleeding. Let's talk insurance. It's very important that you contact your insurance company so that you know your financial responsibility in your surgery. It also will give you an opportunity to ask what equipment will be covered and what is not, and also check to see what your options are for your post-op destination. In preparing for surgery, you'll receive a guidebook. In this guidebook is all of the information that we're covering here today. Please make sure that you bring this book with you to all of your appointments and also make sure that you bring it to the hospital the day of surgery. You will also receive two packs of wipes and instructions how to use them. This is a very important part of our infection prevention program. On the wipes is a chemical called chlorhexidine. This is an anti-infective. Please be cautious in how you use these wipes and follow the instructions explicitly. Please make sure to start from the neck down and cover every inch of your body. One pack is for the night before surgery and the other pack is for the morning of surgery. Please make sure that you follow the instructions explicitly. The night before, make sure that you take a shower, wait one hour, and then do what's called the skin prep with your anti-infective wipes. For your convenience, we ask that you pre-register for the hospital prior to surgery. At that appointment, we ask that you sign necessary paperwork. Also, we ask that you bring your insurance card and ID. We also ask that you meet with the pre-admit nurses who will review your health history, your medication history, and also be asking for an emergency contact. You will need to prepare your home for a safe return. It's very important that you prepare for going home on a walker. Please remember to remove clutter, throw rugs, electrical cords, anything that you could possibly get caught up on. Also remember to keep storage at a waist level. Anything above your head could cause you to fall. If you have small pets, make sure that they stay at a safe distance. We don't want them jumping on you or causing you to fall. Always think safety first. You'll also need a coach. That is a friend or family member, a motivator, someone that's going to help you through this process. This person we asked to help run errands, get groceries, help with cooking, 
We ask for them to come into the hospital and to observe and participate with you while you're doing your therapies. We ask for them to help you with mobility once you get home and also to provide comfort and build your confidence. The day before surgery, you should receive a call from your surgeon's office to confirm your surgery time. If you do not receive a call by 2 p.m., please call your surgeon's office to confirm your arrival time. If you're having surgery on Monday, please call the Friday before your surgery. When you receive that call from the doctor's office, they will instruct you when to stop eating or drinking the night before surgery. Please make sure that you leave any valuables at home when you arrive at the hospital, please check in in the lobby. Once you're identified, they will take you down to the pre-op area and they will ask you to get into a hospital gown. This is the only time at our hospital that we will ask you to get into a hospital gown. Next, you will talk to the anesthesiologist and the surgeon. They will verify your name and what surgery, right or left, and they will make an identifying mark on that area. A nurse will then come to start an IV line and hang antibiotics and pre-medications. Once this is all complete, they will then take you to the operating room. Coaches and family members, we ask that you wait in the main lobby. The surgeon will come and speak to you there once surgery is completed. Make sure that you wear your coach's badge and remember to bring the patient's belongings up to the floor. It's very important the next morning we're gonna ask them to get dressed in their own clothes. Let's talk about the procedure, the total knee replacement. The doctor will make an incision across the top of the knee. They will go in and they will remove any damaged or diseased bone and cartilage. They will then insert a prosthesis. The incision will be closed with staples, stitches, or surgical glue. The duration of the surgery is approximately two hours. The total hip replacement. The doctors use a posterior approach. They will go in and remove any damaged or diseased bone and cartilage, and they will put in a new prosthesis. They will close the incision with staples, stitches, or surgical glue. The duration of this surgery is two to three hours. Next up is the unicondylar knee replacement. This replaces only half of your joint with a new prosthesis. After surgery, you will then go to the recovery room. You will meet your recovery room nurse. You will stay there for approximately one to two hours. They will monitor your vital signs. They will complete assessments. They will provide comfort measures and pain control. Once we receive an order from the doctor, we will then transfer you to your hospital room. You will be transferred to a semi-private room. When you get to the floor, you will meet your nurse. You will meet your nursing assistant, and they will begin monitoring your vital signs. When you get into your room, you will notice that you have a whiteboard. On that whiteboard, there will be information provided for you for your goals for the day and our goals as nurses. You will also notice that you have an overhead trapeze on the bed that is not for your use for therapy, but to assist us in getting you pulled up in bed. We also have a call light. That is there for you to contact the nurses. When you come up from surgery, you will have an IV pole with fluids running. It is only temporary until we get you started back on regular food. Also in the room, we have a privacy curtain. Let's talk pain management, and the key word here is management. We use a scale of zero to 10, zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain you ever felt. Our goal is to keep you four or less. If your pain goes to four or more, we ask that you contact your nurse so that she can intervene. Pain control is an important part of our program. It allows you to eat and sleep and get moving when you need to. So your role in this, your responsibility, we need you to communicate your pain to us. I can't look at your face and know what your pain number is. So please make sure that you intercept your pain. If it's four or more, we wanna hear from you. Please make sure that you take your medications on a regular basis as needed. If you have no pain, we don't wanna medicate you. But if you have a four or more, we need to provide that medicine. Please tell the nurses if the medication that we're providing is not effective and we will work to find a solution. There are different types of discomforts after surgery. You could have incision site soreness and pressure. We treat that with pain medication. You could have swelling and bruising. Also that would cause a tightness around the joint. We would treat that with a cool gel pack, compression and elevation. Other pain relief measures could be 
us asking you to change positions and or to just get up and walk. Make sure that when you get up and walk that you do it with assistance. We like to be proactive and prevent post-operative complications. A very common post-op complication with orthopedic surgeries are blood clots. One thing that we ask you to do are ankle pumps, just a straight ankle pump. This will help to circulate your blood back to your heart. Other methods are early ambulation. We're going to get you up and moving. Also, we have compression stockings, sequentials, and anticoagulant medications. Another post-op complication is pneumonia. We ask that you use an incentive spirometer 10 times per hour and also do coughing and deep breathing. For infection prevention, we will monitor your vital signs and provide antibiotics. For nausea and vomiting, we have medications. And with our opioid medications, it sometimes causes constipation. So we have medications. We ask for you to move frequently and also to drink fluids. To review your day of surgery activities, remember, we're going to ask you to start your ankle pumps. We want you to use the incentive spirometer. We will be controlling your pain, nausea, and vomiting. We will monitor your vital signs, and we will ask you to start eating and drinking. Hello, my name is Puri Nassau. I am the Director of Therapist Services at the Lakewood Regional Medical Center. At this time, I will be talking to you about the physical therapy and the occupational therapy portion of this class. On the day of surgery, you will meet your physical therapist if you're back to your room before 4 o'clock. The therapist will start your exercises. The therapist will train you for out-of-bed activities on how to safely manage your leg, your operated leg, in and out of the bed. At this time, the physical therapist will also teach you on how to use your walker properly. The therapist will start you walking at the bedside. Don't be discouraged. Some people can walk at a far distance. Some people could only do a few steps at a time. Again, this is just a day of surgery. At this time, the physical therapist will also talk to you about your precautions. For the total knee replacement, please avoid putting a pillow under your knee. This could create a problem in the future. For the hip, please remember all your three precautions. You cannot bend your hip beyond 90 degrees. You cannot cross your leg beyond midline. And the third one, you cannot turn your foot inward. If you violate any of these precautions, that could cause your hip to dislocate. For the total knee replacement patients, some of the surgeons prescribe an equipment called continuous passive motion machine, or commonly called a CPM. This will be used while you're in the bed with the goal of improving your passive range of motion on the newly operated knee. On the day after surgery, you will meet your occupational therapist. They will teach you on how to safely bathe and dress your lower body. Please do not forget to have your clothes beside you. For the total hip replacement patients, the occupational therapist will teach you on how to use an adaptive equipment in order for you to follow your hip precautions. For the total knee replacement, you may or you may not need it. The therapist will teach you on how to use a reacher, which is an adaptive equipment to assist you on how to dress your lower body. Remember, you cannot bend beyond 90 degrees. You have some limitations on the motion of your leg. This will act as an extension of your arm in order for you not to bend forward. The other equipment that the occupational therapist will show you on how to use is what we call as a SAC aid. Remember, you just have your surgery. You cannot bend over. So what you do is you put the sack onto that equipment, put your operative foot on the sack aid, pull the strings to put your sack on. After your occupational therapy session, your individual training with the physical therapist will start, which includes getting in and out of the bed, getting in and out of a chair, walking distances in the hallway, stair training, and car transfer training. After your individual physical therapy session, you'll be attending a group therapy session for an hour. This will be repeated at 2.30 in the afternoon. To summarize your very busy activity during this day, you will have your occupational therapy session, individual session for physical therapy, group therapy session, another individual therapy session, 
and a group therapy. Remember, you're gonna be seen at a total for five times during this day in order for you to master your activity and your safety to prepare you for returning to your home. For your safety, you will be going home with a front-wheeled walker, and also some of you will be getting a bedside commode. Just a reminder, you have to make sure that you really know on how to safely use the walker. Please do not pull up on the walker. You have to make sure at least one hand is on the chair or on the bed in order for you to come up to standing. When making a turn, please remember to do it safely as you're instructed by your physical therapist. If you have a total knee or a total hip replacement surgery, you will have a preoperative exercises that you have to do, which could be found in your guidebook. This time, we're gonna review your preoperative exercises. Most of these exercises will be performed when you're lying on the bed. The first exercise is the ankle pumps. Remember, just to move your foot up and down. The next exercise is what we call as the quad set. This time, you're just gonna try to tighten your thigh. Try to get the muscles working. Next is what we call as the gluteal sets. Just remember, just tightening your bottom. Squeeze, hold for a few seconds, and relax. Squeeze, hold for a few seconds, and relax. For hip abduction, a deduction, lie on your back with toes pointed to the ceiling and knees straight. Tighten the quad muscles and slide the leg outside and back to starting position. Next exercise, heel slides. Just slide your heel back and forth. If you need to have an assistance, use a strap. Short arc quads. Place your knee on a rolled towel. Kick your leg up and hold for a few seconds, then return to the starting position. Please omit the exercise number seven on your guidebook. Let's continue. Straight leg graces. Lie on your back with unaffected knee bent and foot flat. Tighten the quad or thigh muscles on the affected leg and lift the leg 12 inches from the surface. Keep knees straight and toes pointed toward your head. Next exercise, arm chair push-ups. If you have shoulder problems, you may have to omit this exercise. While sitting in a sturdy armchair with feet flat on the floor, scoot to front of the seat and place hands on armrest. Straighten arms, raising bottom up from the seat as far as possible. Use legs as needed to lift. If you're having total hip replacement surgery, you will have some additional exercises that could be found in your guidebook. Thank you so much for taking your time in watching this class. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your joint care coordinator. And we wish you luck for your surgery. Mm -hmm.